Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ is baptized. The famous Russian author and poet Dostoevsky, he said famously, beauty will save the world. And this statement makes a lot of sense to us as Orthodox intuitively, but to the rest of the world, who's not as Orthodox, it's a puzzling statement. And it's a puzzling statement because the world is so locked into things that are in many ways antithetical to beauty. Production, power, efficiency, vanity. These things often get in the way of true beauty. And these are the things that, outside of our holy tradition, even religious folk find this to be values to pursue. Now, those things that I've mentioned, efficiency and power, those may make sense to you. But when I say vanity, you can say to yourself, well, isn't beauty a type of vanity? And I would say, if we reflect as Orthodox, we would say, no. Actually, vanity is not a part of true beauty. Because vanity exists for the sake of itself. When something is vain, when someone is vain, we say someone's vain because they're so self-aware that they're ignorant of everything else around them. Ignorant of everyone else around them. And so this is not beautiful. True beauty is this wondrous, mysterious mix of parts and a whole together. Parts making a whole. And them being aware of each other and not themselves. The epistle today speaks of this when it speaks of how the Lord gave some for prophets and apostles, teachers, but more importantly, our worship bears us out. And this is why, as Orthodox Christians, even if you're not necessarily following with me intellectually, your heart is. Because the liturgy is still mysterious to most of us. I know it is to me. I do at least twice, I do the liturgy at least twice a week. I've been doing it for years as a priest, and before that as a deacon, and before that as a layman. And I've gone to school and I've done all these things, and the liturgy is still mysterious to me. There are things about the liturgy that just speak to me and to you on a level that is not rational thought. It's deeper. It's the heart. And what we are seeing is the body of Christ coming together in the mystical, profound way in the liturgy. Now, Many of us remember before we were in the halls of the church of how we could miss this. Because in some traditions, the emphasis is so much on you, what you read, what you know, maybe who you know or who you knew. And that was the way you climbed the ladder. That's the way that you were justified and stamped as a Christian. How much scripture could you quote? How many facts did you know? But the emphasis was all about you, the individual. But for some of us, we came from the other side of the perspective, where it was about the big machine. The big machine, the big city on the hill. Where there was no variation. Everything was mechanized. It was about the power from on top, coming down. And so for many of us, we were scarred and we were crippled with approaching God and spirituality with mechanization and formula, standardization, ruling the day. So the one hand, the individual, where it's just me, and the other hand, where there is no me, and it's just the machine moving. Neither one of those are beautiful. Here, 
in the Orthodox Church, we have found beauty, and beauty has led the way for us because the whole and the part work together. But sometimes we need to zoom out a little bit to see this. We just celebrated theophany. Wonderful. Much joy. And each great fast, we bring a focus. So next, we will be moving into Pascha. And Pascha is this celebration, right? But first, theophany. At theophany, we recognize Christ's baptism. Water, the element of water. We'll move into Lent and Pascha with the resurrection from the grave. Earth is recognized. And then from where do we go? To ascension. The Lord rises into the clouds and heavens, the air is recognized. And then the 50 days after Pascha is what? Pentecost, fire, water, earth, air, fire. All the elements are brought into beauty, but we don't see it because in the moment it's all about theophany. And then in the moment, it's all about Pascha. And then in the moment, it's all about Ascension. In the moment, it's all about Pentecost. But if we zoom out a little bit, we see something wondrous, that God has brought them all together in the year. And we, as his body, we worship him for his wonder and his ability to weave beauty in everything. My sons and my daughters, you are very much like this. Each one of you has a unique place in the body of Christ. And when you are fixated on your single part, oftentimes what you're supposed to do and who you're supposed to be will suffer because of this vanity that we spoke earlier. Because it's all about you. You can't see what else is going on and how your part fits in with someone else's part. It's so important for us to recognize this because beauty will save the world. Because although people err to the right and to the left and they bring a disorder, we can recognize, we recognize every liturgy. We recognize every great feast and if we can zoom out a little bit, we can recognize in the whole year that God still has everything in order. Everything has its place. Every aspect is recognized, but never to the detriment of the other. There's an harmony, there's a synergy. And when we recognize this harmony and the synergy, then not only are we able to participate better, but we're able to see God in the lives of others God in our circumstances. God even in those things that are difficult. Why? Because that difficulty has a place. That difficulty is there to teach us something, to reveal something, to purify us somehow. And this is also part of God's beauty. This is also how we can say beauty will save the world. Because Christ says in the book of Revelation, Behold, I make all things new. And so this is how he brings beauty to us. Each and every day, each and every liturgy, each and every feast, each and every year. May God help us to continue to see the beauty that's revealed in the life that he's given us in our worship. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.